What's up, guys? Today, I wanted to take a hit at the famous circle area problem. So the problem, if you haven't heard about it, um, it is uh, sometimes also called Maser's circle problem, I think. So the question at hand is just if you, um, if you have n points on a circle, say these three, and then you connect connect them all by lines how many area segments do you get so in this case you obviously get four and then if you add another one you get um, you get eight and the fascinating part about this problem according to me at least is what you will find if you just try some shit okay so firstly of course if we just have two points then it's obviously uh, just two areas and then previously we had four areas now we have eight areas, and if we add another point, um, like here, then how many areas do we have now? Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so now you might just like, okay, it's obvious, it's just 2 to the power of n minus 1. Sorry, n, just 2 to the power of n. And actually, this would be incorrect. Um, and this is a really famous problem for specifically this property. And also, it has to hold that no no three lines intersect in the same place because then you like lose an area. So you could either consider that or like the maximum amount of areas one book could create. Um, so if we were to do another, well, I'm just gonna erase all the dots right here. So if we add another line here or another point, sorry, then we get okay, we get this line, this line. Uh, and you will also get this line, this one, and finally this one. And now, if we count the areas, how many are there? Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31. And there is no 30 second. It is correct that the answer is 31. And then when you continue, this deviates further and further from the, this exponential function. So the question is then, of course, what is the amount of areas? And how do we do this? Well, for this one, I at least like to think of this as we're just starting with the simplest. So we have uh, two lines here. When we add another line, so this case isn't really, uh, this case is kind of special, you could say. So in this case, we have, okay, so we start at this point, and then we draw one line, and then we split this area into two, and then we draw this line, and then we split this area into two. Okay, so this isn't weird, because there are no, like, intersections, and it isn't. But then, say, we add this point right here. Okay, then we get these two, where they're just, like, the same from the previous one, where we split this area into two, two times. And then you also get this line. What happens here, okay, is we start here, and now... We've split this area into two, right? And then we continue, and then we've split this area into two. So we could say that every intersection yields a new area, you could say. So it's by default that a line splits one area into two, like in this case, where it has no intersections. But you could say, okay, new areas A uh, is equal to, maybe this should be a function. But yeah, you, you get the point. It's just intersections plus one right so let us then look at intersections let's make a function of the amount of intersections there are from any when you add another point to the circle so i will draw a new one here okay so i think it's actually easier to visualize when you have like an arbitrary amount of points so you start here with your um, first point and then maybe you have your second here third one there fourth one there and then you have no idea how many there are there are around and then finally you have your n plus one and why we choose n plus one is because if we think about what we want to do here essentially is find a relationship or a function of how many new intersections there are when you add a point so therefore the the function should be of n and then and uh, when you have added your point it should then of course there are n plus one points so you want to refer to the previous amounts so then it's just well it of course it doesn't matter it's just notation so here okay what happens here okay when we add when we have added this so obviously all these are uh, connected 
previously and with all the other points also, like the lines everywhere. So then firstly, we get this one, which just yields one extra, right? And then when we draw this line from one to three, what happens? Well, we have intersected every connecting path to two, except the one that goes from uh, two to three and two to one, of course. But every other path, the one that goes from two to n plus one and two to four and two to n half or whatever, every single point was intersected, right? So how many points was that? Well, okay, so we have every two from, f it is connected to every point from four all the way up to n plus one. So therefore, that should just be n plus one minus four plus one because we're not really we're not counting the ones in between or we're, we're we're including both points right so this is then of course just n minus two and then when we move on to drawing the connecting line with the fourth point what are we intersecting then then we're intersecting every single possible connection between either the point one and, or three and every single point outside so how many are of those are there? Well, there are two points inside, so we have to multiply by two, and then we just multiply by how many ones there are outside. Sorry, this should have been minus three, I'm sorry. We were connecting to the third one. Now we're currently connecting to the fourth. So we're multiplying two by, well, by just n plus one minus four, which is just n minus three. So we can kind of see a pattern here, okay? So we have like one times one plus, yeah, also, if we're just strictly counting intersections, then there shouldn't be a plus one here. Okay, so now we should be able to see a sign, uh, a pattern. So we have uh, zero times one, basically, or just zero, zero, and then plus one times n minus uh, one, plus two times n minus two, and one might intuitively understand that this is how it will continue forever. So if you think about drawing from 1 to the kth point, where k is l less than n plus 1, then we're just multiplying the amount of points that are on the right side and the amount of points that are on the left side. So the total amount of points is n plus 1, and we're moving 1 in k, so we're dealing with just uh, the sum should be n minus 1, right? So then, how many points do we have here? Well, we just have k minus 2 points, right? As I said, when k was 4, we had 2 points in between. So we're multiplying k minus 2 by n plus 1 minus k. Yes, exactly. n plus 1 minus k. Because then the sum becomes, if we sum these up instead of multiply them, then we get n minus 1, which is, uh, which is great. So this is what we're going to use. So I shall therefore state that the amount of new areas that we get when we add another point to a circle with already n amount of points is the sum where k ranges from 2, okay, so we're starting at the point 2, all the way up to n plus 1 of the amount of intersections, which is k minus 2 times n plus 1 minus k, and then plus one because we're counting all the new areas. So this is how many new points we get. So all we have to do now is just to find a function that satisfies this here. So the amount of new points is obviously just the difference of the function value between n plus one and n. So we just need to find a function that satisfies this. And now I've run out of space, so I need to write some things. So give me one second. Hello, I'm back. So now, Let's simplify this left-hand side right here. Okay, so firstly, I would like to move out the plus one, and I would like to change the, the range of k. So firstly, let's just move it out. Okay, so how many terms are we actually summing up here? So, okay, so we're summing up from two all the way to up to and including n, minus, n plus one. So therefore, we, have, we should just have one times n plus one minus two plus one because we're including both endpoints so therefore all of these plus one minus two plus one is just zero so we just have n we just have an n there and then for the sum i want to change the range as i said so i would like to decrease 
these, uh, the range and then increase the value inside. So we change every k for k plus 1 and then we decrease this to 1 to n. So k ranges from 1 to n of then k plus 1 minus 2, so minus 1, and then n plus 1 minus k minus 1. So the minus 1 disappears, so we just have n minus k. Okay, so this looks a lot neater. And we're also ranging from 1 to n, so it feels, it feels better. Uh, so, okay, what is this then? Okay, this is n plus the sum where k ranges from 1 to n of, okay, so let's just expand these parentheses. So then we have kn minus k squared minus n plus k. And this, of course, we can rewrite as minus k squared plus n plus 1 times k minus n. And here, so now we can do some further simplification. So we still have plus n. I should not forget about that. But then, of course, since this is a sum, we can split all of these up. Uh, so we'll start with the, just the minus n there. So, okay, so what are we doing? We're minus n times the range, which we know is n, so it's just minus n squared. Okay, so that one is done. And then, uh, this one is really simple, because this is a coefficient. We can move that outside the sum. And then just the sum where k ranges from 1 to n of just k is just like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n that we can write as, okay, so firstly the coefficient, it was 1, n plus 1, and then it is n times n plus 1 over 2. This is the formula for the arithmetic sum. And then we want to subtract the sum where k ranges from 1 to n of minus k squared. And actually there's also a formula for this one, and that is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Okay. So this is great. Now we can just move everything onto the same uh, fraction. So we'll have everything over 6. Uh, so therefore we'll have 6n minus 6n squared plus, okay, so this n times n plus 1 squared, that should just be n3 plus 2n squared plus n. And then everything here is multiplied by 3 because we want to have an division by 6, so it's just 3n squared plus uh, 6n, n cubed, sorry, plus 6n squared plus 3n, and then we're subtracting all of this, so what is this? Okay, this is minus 2n cubed minus n squared minus 2n squared minus n, and everything over 6, and then now we can rewrite this as, okay, so I'm just going to write in 1 over 6 times, okay, so now we can factorize or sum up some of these, okay, so we have 3n cubed, that's the only cubed, no, sorry, uh, okay, so we have 3n cubed minus 2n cubed, so that thing disappears, and then we have just n cubed left, okay, so that's the, the cubed terms, and now the s squares, so we have minus 6 plus 6, these cancel out, and then minus, and then minus 2. So it should be minus 3n squared. Okay, so these terms all disappear. And then for the, for the linear ones, we have 6n plus 3. Okay, so that's 9 minus 1. So that's 8 plus 8n. Great. So now we have a third grade polynomial. And we know that our, the difference in function values of adjacent n's is always supposed to be equal to this. Now, what does this mean? Well, you can think about this as kind of like derivative, or if you've done any recursion theory before, you would know that, okay, if the difference between two functions is a third grade polynomial, then setting that it should be a fourth grade polynomial will most likely work. Uh, so I'm just gonna rewrite this here a bit smaller, just so I remember minus 3n squared plus 8n. Yes. So now again, I need to erase some things. Give me one second. I'm back. So now, oh, sorry, wait. Hello. For real this time. Okay. Um, so as I said, we, we shall assume that f of n is a fourth grade polynomial. So f of n is equal to some constant a times n4 plus b n3 plus c n squared plus dn plus e where all of these are real numbers, of course. And then we will just write down what the fuck is fn plus 1 minus fn. So now we need to do a whole fucking factorizations or 
uh, brackets. So uh, yeah, I'll do that real quick. So we should have n a n four plus four a squared plus four a sorry six six a n squared plus four a n plus a plus shit plus b n cubed plus three b n squared plus three b n plus b and then plus c n squared plus two c n plus c plus d n plus d plus e okay so that is f n plus one and then we subtract f n so that is minus a n four minus n cubed minus c n squared minus e n minus e Okay, so here we can see that a lot of things cancel out. These disappear, this disappears, uh, this disappears, this disappears, and these guys disappear. Okay, so what do we have left then? Okay, we have... Um, so firstly, we want to gather all the uh, third grade terms because all the, the fourth grade one just disappeared. So we have... Okay, but here we have 4a. Yes, and that's the only one. Okay, so we just have 4a n cubed. Great. And now... So that one is also done, and then we need to find out the squared. Okay, so we have 6a plus 3b. That's the only squared terms that remain. Okay, so 6a plus 3b, yes, times n squared. Okay, so that's done, and now we need to find all the first grade terms. So what is that? Okay, that is 4a plus 3b plus 2c. Yeah, 4a plus 3b plus 2c times n. And all the coefficients of the constant terms are just all the coefficients a plus b plus c plus d. And this is supposed to be equal to 1, 6, n cubed minus, okay, so 3 times 3 over 6 is just minus 1 half n squared plus 4 thirds uh, n should be. Yes, for all n's. So what does this imply then? So we want these coefficients to be the same. Uh, this coefficient, these coefficients should be the same. All the coefficients should be the same. And the constant term should be zero because we have no constant term on the right hand side. So therefore you just solve the system of equations that you get. And then you get like a is equal to 1 over 24. And then you want uh, 6. Yes, exactly. So 4a. And then you want 6a plus 3b to be equal to 1 minus one half uh, meaning that okay so 6a is just 1 over 4 right so we want 1 over 4 plus 3b to be equal to minus 1 half which then of course means that b is uh, minus uh, 1 fourth and then what is c well here okay we want so 4a plus 3b plus 2c is supposed to be equal to 3 over 4 and what is 4b? 4b is 1 over 6, as we knew. So 1 over 6 plus, um, sorry, minus 3 fourths. Um, no, sorry, I shouldn't write it like that. Okay, so 1 over 6 minus 3 fourths plus 2c should be equal to 4 thirds, which then means that 2c should be equal to, uh, yeah, because okay, we have 16 plus 7, so that's um, 23 over 12. Which then, of course, means that c is equal to 23 over 24. And then to find d, you want that the sum of all of these should be zero, of course. And then after that, you just plug everything back into your formula. And from the fact that uh, you know that maybe, like, okay, we have uh, f of uh, 2 is supposed to be equal to 2. So then you just find out what e should be. Because that isn't in here. And it kind of makes sense also because the diff we're only considering the difference. So then if the, the function is just added with a constant term, it doesn't make the difference uh, any different. So yes, you just to find d, you just set that, okay, the sum of all of these should be zero. And then you find your function. And then apparently you can factorize it really neatly. Like you can have like n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three. And then plus like, some constant constant times n times n minus 1. So then you can make a um, binomial coefficient uh, function instead. So yes, that was everything. Sorry if the video got a bit long, but I hope you appreciate it anyway. And uh, I will see you some other time. Bye-bye.